Another issue for Filipino women's writing is the steadily growing number of works contributed by women to current publications. This growth is graphically marked by Jimeno Abad's three-volume retrospective, Anthology of Philippine Poetry in English. The first volume covering roughly the first 50 years includes only six women among a total of 80, the second volume five among 49, the third volume which will carry the anthology to the present time, approximately 10 to 25 women among 50. Women's writing is increasing and we hope it will not change. Besides the upswing, there has also been a shift, a shift away from disembodied speech towards gender-specific speech. Women shift to writing about their bodies. The primacy of the female body and of women's need to reclaim their bodies as being their first before it is their lovers or their children affirm over and over again in works by the present generation of women writers. In the experience of parenthood is common to both men and women. There can be no denying the difference in the way parenthood is experienced. No wonder then that women are drawn over and over again to telling stories of their bodies bearing children. Pregnancy and abortion are issues that males can certainly discuss and dramatize in their writings, but decidedly not in the same way that females do. Because females are sensitive and with writings of that happy, they can relate to it. The uniqueness of women as child bearers is too obvious to be ignored and readily conceded to women writers as territorial writers. Angela Manala and Gloria's poems in 1940, the first published collection of poetry by a Filipino woman, failed to win any prize in the Commonwealth Literary Awards because, among other reasons, the all-male board of judges reportedly found some of the poems morally objectionable, especially one entitled, Revolt from Hymen. Even when their subject was not specifically female desire, Women who dared write about sexuality were criticized and worse, suspected of sexual indiscretion of their private lives. When Estrella Alphonse's story, Fairy Tale in the City, was published in 1955, she was charged in court with obscenity. Her supporters claimed the suit was leveled less at the story itself than at Alphonse's private life, unconventional by the standards of time. When Kirima Pulitan stories were published in 1968, contemporary readers were startled both by the extent to which the sexual dimension of the stories was brought to the forefront, as well as the female perspective from which these were drawn. It was a mere question of time when a collection of erotica by women would be published. In 1992, it did with the tantalizing title of Forbidden Fruit. Reader response to the bilingual anthology was immediate and predictably compassion. To a woman, females greeted the book with a raves, a landmark book, a guide post towards eventual liberation, a reason for women to rejoice, a sumptuous celebration of erotica, both of the body and the mind. Male reviewers were visibly discomfited by the book's appearance and admittedly ambivalent with their responses. One of them confessed to having approached the book. Italia later spoke of the book as a wonderful indicator of the much welcome freedom of female writers to express themselves. However, he ended the same review by encouraging readers to get a copy and learned something from the girls. Another male reviewer concluded his own mixed review of the anthology with a cavalier dismissal of the text by referring to the book's cover, A Ripe Slice Papaya, Great Cover. This book should boost the sales of papayas. As another male reviewer observed, the book brought out a basic difference in the male and female notions of the erotic. Men complain that the books isn't erotic enough and women countersign that men do not understand what a woman finds erotic. 
Having one eaten of the forbidden food, women writers are certain to continue writing. They write not even the flaming swords of well-intentioned guardians of public morals can expel them from the Philippine literary landscape. Ug mauni ang buhaton. Una, inita ang mantika sa kaha. Kaduha, ha, gisaha ang sibuyas bumbay ug ahos. Sunod, ilunod ang iyang kumo na iya kaming isumbag sa inyong lunod. Sunod, isunod ang iyang mga tiin na iyang ipatid nini. Isagod at hindi ang ubang bahin sa iyang lawas. Pagkahuman, pabukali, tuslok-tuslok ka sa tinidong. Mas maayo kong kutsilyo, timplahi dayong pamalikas o magbisyon. Yawa ka, pisik ka, mamatay ka. Dayon, tinawi. Hauna, pagkahuman, kan kunwal kunwalay lami ilawog sa iro 